In our solar system, we only have one star, which as you likely know, is the sun. For us living here on Earth, we are very lucky that this is the case, as life would either be very different or non-existent if our sun was in something like a binary star system. This does raise an interesting question though. What is the closest star to our sun? To answer this, we turn our clocks back 109 years to the year 1915. And we focus our attention on Scottish astronomer Robert Innes. The day was October 12th. The location was the Union Observatory in Johannesburg, South Africa. What did Robert do on this day? He announced the discovery of what we now know as the closest star to our sun. After having thoroughly studied the Alpha Centauri system over time, Innes suspected that it might have an additional companion. He compared photographic plates taken five years apart and observed that a faint star had moved. He found that its movement was roughly the same as Alpha Centauri, and after further investigation, he concluded that it was closer to Earth as well. By 1917, he had proposed that the new star should be called Proxima Centauri, because Proxima is the Latin word for nearest. By the way, Proxima Centauri is around 4.2 light years away from us. Today, we're going to talk about the whole Centauri system, but let us first start off with Proxima. Before we get into that, if you enjoy my videos, please give me a like and subscribe. Believe it or not, it really does help me out, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Proxima is a red dwarf star and has a spectral class of M5.5. As I mentioned earlier, the star is quite close to us in astronomical terms at just over four light years away. The image of it, shown here, was taken by Hubble, and while to such a large telescope it is bright, don't be fooled. To the naked eye, it can't even be seen at all. Coming in at only about one-eighth the mass of our sun, its average luminosity is also quite small even more so when compared to the other stars in its system. Even with this though, on occasion, its brightness increases. You see, Proxima is what is known as a flare star. What makes it like this, you might ask? Well, basically, there are convection processes within the star's body that make it prone to random and dramatic changes in brightness. This results in brilliant bursts of starlight, but that is not all. Combined with other factors, this means that Proxima Centauri is in for a very long life. Far longer than the universe so far has even existed for. Estimates show us that this star will remain a main sequence star for another 4 trillion years can't even wrap my head around that one. This star also has exoplanets, two of them that we know of so far. They have been labeled Proxima Centauri b and Proxima Centauri d. And kind of like their host star, they are the closest planets to our solar system. Proxima Centauri b, which was discovered in 2016, also happens to be in its star's habitable zone. It orbits at around 0.04 astronomical units and has an orbital period of 11.2 Earth days, so it is pretty speedy. Other than this though, its properties are only poorly understood at best at the time of this recording. It is believed to be a terrestrial planet, possibly like Earth, with a minimum mass of 1.07 Earth masses along with a slightly larger radius. Now, while it is in the habitable zone, it is not known if it has an atmosphere. Also, because Proxima Centauri is a flare star, 
there is a chance any atmosphere it could form could also get stripped right away. This all means that despite its location compared to its host star, there is no guarantee that it is actually habitable. Proxima Centauri D, which was first detected in 2020 by the Very Large Telescope using radial velocity data, is likely now confirmed as in 2022 it was detected by other observatories. Though I would like to know that there is still a chance that it is not really there. Assuming it is, and based on the measurements we do have though, it is a sub-Earth holding at least one quarter of its mass, also similar to around twice the mass of Mars. It orbits at around 0 0.029 astronomical units from its host star, and has an orbital period of 5.1 days. It is both the least massive and innermost planet in the Proxima Centauri system. There is a potential third exoplanet currently labeled Proxima Centauri C, but at this time it is still controversial. If it does exist though, we think it would be something of a super Earth or mini Neptune, coming in at around seven times the mass of Earth, and orbiting at around 1.49 astronomical units. With that though, let's now return to the other two stars in this system. They are a pair labeled as Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. A also known as Rigel Cantaris, is the primary member of this triple star system. It is quite similar to our sun, being a main sequence star with a yellowish color. Also like our sun, its spectral class is type G2-V. It is a bit larger though, with about 10% more mass, and a radius that is about 22% larger. In this image, we can see a comparison of the two. Its magnetic activity is like our sun's as well, showing coronal variability due to star spots that are modulated by the rotation of the star. Since 2005 though, curiously, its levels of activity have fallen into a deep minimum. This may be similar to our sun's historical Maunder minimum, or it may have a very long stellar activity cycle and is currently in the process of slowly recovering from a normal minimum phase. It is also one of the brightest stars in our night sky, coming in at I think number four with an apparent magnitude of plus 0.01 and with apparent magnitudes, the lower the number, the brighter the object. I mentioned earlier that it is part of a triple star system, but it goes even further. Within that, it is part of a binary as well, with the aforementioned star Alpha Centauri b, also known as Ptolemon. Also a main sequence star, this one is spectral class K1-V, and is more of an orange color than its counterpart, Alpha Centauri A. Coming back to the sun for a bit, Ptolemon has about 90% of its mass, and is around 14% smaller in diameter. While it has a lower luminosity than A, it does emit more energy in the X-ray band, so it emits more X-ray energy. It seems to be more magnetically active than its counterpart as well. To us, it is a bit dimmer with an apparent magnitude of plus 1.35. And there you have it. Hopefully from this, you have gained some interest in the triple star system of Alpha Centauri and really in our universe in general. There are many things that instill in me just how big our universe is. And one of those things is the knowledge that the closest star to our sun takes even light just over four years to reach. The spacecraft that we have that has made it the furthest so far is Voyager 1, which is somewhere around 0 0.016 light years away. 
And that has taken it nearly 50 years. In space, we are really dealing with truly mind-boggling distances. I was really excited to make this video too because it is one of, if not the first, videos requested by a viewer. Which for me is a particularly cool step in my journey of making videos and hopefully teaching and entertaining those who watch. And believe it or not, with practically each video I make, I learn something new myself. To me, this is a big part of the fun of doing it. So please, if there is anything you would like to add to this discussion, or if there is a topic that you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. I would love to see you there. And as always, I hope you have learned something today, and let us all step outside tonight and look towards the stars.